Good morning to you too. Hello. Good morning. All right. So it's uh, it's been just uh, one minute, uh, ten thirty one. So let's start, let's start because we have a lot to talk about, and uh, and we could have very well done a two hours, uh, a two hour webinar. Uh, so again, my name is Emmanuel van Houdenhoven. I'm uh, one of the two sales and recruitment managers at uh, Undutchables. Um, and uh, we are delighted to welcome you at our expert talk number five um, about quality of life at work and remote working. And of course, I'm delighted to welcome uh, our expert today, Sophie Grunfelder. Uh, Sophie is French also, as it happens. And uh, she's an uh, 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 international consultant and uh, HR researcher. And maybe you want to introduce yourself, Sophie? Yes, yes, just a few words. So, so yes, I am consultant. So my job is to support quality of work life uh, and also sustainable leadership and all, way, all ways of developing and responsive management for top management, but also for middle managers. And uh, as you know, we have uh, experienced a very tough times. And during the last months, I had several international teams, most of the time in Benelux and France, to improve their remote skills and uh, increase organizational resilience in the face of COVID-19. And uh, as Emmanuel said, I'm also a researcher. So I'm investigating and working on the influences of the social support from support business functions on middle managers well-being so also work on mental health um, but on the third hand if i can say <laughs> uh, i'm also a business school teacher and i teach organizational behavior and among other e-leaderships and full remote work management methods to both academic and professionals yes which is what interests us a little bit more today uh, your tips and uh, best practice from law, from your clients in the benelux and in france and I should also mention that actually Sophie is, uh, is very modest and she's currently, she's not saying, but she's currently writing a book on uh, quality of life at work. So this is really uh, the topic at heart for her. And, um, and, and the, the, the book, if I well understood, is going to be published uh, somewhere next year in the second half of next year. So good luck with that. Uh, and we'll follow it uh, shortly. Uh, so yeah. what does it mean? Uh, having and holding a, a healthy work-life balance. Uh, well, it is about the ability to successfully combine your work and your uh, family commitments. The assumption being that uh, your personal life is uh, important not only for your own well-being, but also for the well-being of all of the members uh, within your household, and, and not just the working ones, of course. Uh, this is something that is particularly important to grasp in our Dutch environment because the Dutch gesin, et gesin, not the, the, the family in a large context, but really the, 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 the core uh, family is uh, central in the Dutch society. And not only that, but uh, also uh, there is a 76% of, uh, of the population, uh, the Dutch population, who works. And this is actually uh, above the uh, OECD average of 68%. So there's a really a large, large, large proportion of the population, the Dutch population that works. Uh, that being said, the Dutch have consistently rated in the top three countries for the work-life balance. So why, how is that possible? Well, possibly because the Dutch have defined very, uh, uh, strict and, and clear uh, working hours, and they stick to them religiously, I should add, which is actually a little surprising when you come from, uh, from outside of the Netherlands, but that's also uh, becoming very attractive, very fast to all of us uh, internationals working in the Netherlands. And it makes it potentially also harder to leave the Netherlands and to go on to work in, in uh, other countries. Uh, the, the other thing is, um, uh, of course, also possibly because uh, the Netherlands, in line with what we just described, uh, in the Netherlands, you only have 0.4% of em employees who admit working very, very long hours. And this is 
uh, this is in the top three countries uh, and it has been for many years uh, together with uh, Russia and Switzerland. And uh, this, is, uh, this is a number that is very typical because if you look at the OECD average, we are talking 11% of employees would meet working very long hours. And since this is a little bit of a French morning, uh, in France, 7.7% of employees admit, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that in France it may even be a lot higher than that. Uh, so with all of this in mind, uh, you could argue why are we talking today about, uh, about uh, potential uh, difficulties in the work-life balance at the moment. Well, um, clearly we are living through an exceptional year. And uh, while a lot of us who were still working in the first lockdown period from March to May, uh, were ex excited about those new measures to some extent. You know, people were uh, commuting for long hours per week. I was one of them. Uh, suddenly uh, were home all the time. So uh, extra family time. Uh, it was also exciting as a company to see how quickly you were able to grasp and adapt and, and carry on working and carry on doing what you do. And, uh, and of course, we evolved into this second wave and second uh, more or less lockdown uh, with no end in sight. In, in the spring, we knew that with, with practical certainty, certainty that we would be able to go out in the summer. Uh, now, we don't know how long it is going to last. We are also, also in, the, in the autumn, entering the winter. Uh, the days are shorter. Uh, when we get out of work at 5.30, it's uh, practically pitch black outside. So it's a very different environment. And of course, a lot of us have not been able to uh, gather with the teams physically in, and spend any time at all uh, on a regular basis in the office. So all all of that um, basically gives uh, some added pressure individually and the effort that was made in the spring was more of a collective effort and now we are switching to something that uh, slowly but surely evolves to uh, the individual within the team within the company and uh, and and what we can do to to help the individual the it, it practically seems like there is a, a, a the beginning of a, a little taboo around uh, because if you have the chance to work how how do, 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 how do you dare talking even about your difficulties, emotional difficulties, the fact that you may find it heavy to be at home all the time, to motivate yourself, uh, feel part of a, a larger team, feel part of your company still. So basically this session is, is, is dedicated to uh, tips and best practices for all of the individuals working out there and also for all of the managers uh, who uh, manage the team and, and are also individuals themselves. So Sophie will guide us through um, a, a series of, uh, it's not do's and don'ts, but it's how to's. So how to collaborate well, how to communicate well with your team, how to manage your team, uh, possibly with a tailored approach. And, uh, and how do you recognize uh, the individual signs of difficulties? And ultimately, how do you come together? Because as a company, you come together on a regular basis. So how do you do it in our uh, remote work? So let's now um, understand uh, from Sophie how we can, uh, in these times, uh, maintain the same level of well-being uh, in our current work-life balance set into remote mode. Sophie? Ah, you need to unmute. You need to unmute. Okay, thank you for this kind introduction. <laughs> I will... And, uh, uh, maybe accept, you want to switch... I will share my screen. Yes. yes, thank you. Oh, and I forgot to mention why you're doing that. Uh, so, uh, uh, we are going to be doing, uh, for those of you who have been there with us uh, uh, previously, this time it's more of an interactive uh, session. So it means that uh, whenever you have a question and you feel that it's, uh, it's uh, in, it, you know, uh, in line with uh, what Sophie is describing, don't, don't uh, hesitate to share it. And I will relay the question to, uh, to Sophie as we go along. All right. But I don't you see you your, your presentation still. Yeah, I was waiting that you was uh, ending a talking. Yeah, perfect. 
I think you get it now. Yes, perfect. Yes, thank you. So thank you very much, Emmanuel, for welcoming me. And thank you for Undutchables also. I'm really happy to give this webinar today. As, as you know, quality of work life and remote working are not necessarily good friends during lockdown. But the experience of remote working we are all doing right now, it will help us. It will help us draw the future of work. So take advantage of it. In this webinar, I will give you examples and tips of what you can do for yourself, for your colleagues, your employers, to have just quick wins in your quality of work life. In the past, remote work covered a large range of uses, as, as example, working from home, but also trains, planes, customers' offices, co-working spaces. But what we are experiencing right now is mostly trying to create our virtual office at home. What we are talking about when we are talking about virtual offices. So it's the condition first of being able to work in and out the office. So we are talking about spaces, areas, and geographical location of your job. It means that the virtual office has no geographical boundaries. Then, in the other hand, the virtual office is being able to work in and out office hours using information and communication technologies. So we are now talking about time, hours, and day of work, and non-work, your family time, and your leisure. So it means that the virtual office does not necessarily have temporal boundaries either. So to begin with a quick sum up of what we are talking about this morning, uh, we are facing this new uh, challenge, and we are talking about this definition, quality of work life and remote working is about boundaries. And as we will see further, aware boundaries, mental boundaries. Remote working and the virtual office you are creating right now does not offer for you the retail borders we are used to have. And in the same way, the virtual office does not have temporal boundaries either. And of course, when you are working in and out, I mean, working anytime, anywhere, Sometimes it can be tough. So working anywhere, anytime, but actually I, I guess that anywhere is uh, mostly working from home and you're between your kitchen or your living room, some, something like that. So it's all about time and space and work. It means your action. And I would like to have a metaphor, uh, a, a very quick metaphor. We, we can see the virtual office at, at the theater, you own theater, and to be totally understandable by your audience, that means your colleagues, your manager, and, and your family also, you have to respect the famous three rules. So like the classical unities, one time, one space, one action. Very clear and easy to do. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the question of the day, what can we do to face this ambitious challenge and avoid the impression of, uh, I don't know, sleeping in the office or working in a playground, something like that. First thing, communication. I guess it's not a secret for you, but concerning the communication, you have three uh, aspects you have to think about. With your colleague, you have to establish open line of conversation, including frequent communication with your team. Send a clear message to your colleagues, the closest colleagues. Say what you do, how you do it, and what communication channel you prefer to collaborate, phone, mails, something else. And you have to do it right here, right now. Don't wait for that. Here is a tip. Basically, we consider that if you cannot fix a problem, maximum with three mails, that's a sign that you have to change channel. Just make a call. Another thing, maybe you don't know that, but 93% of your, our face-to-face -face communication is non-verbal. It means that you should be extremely clear and friendly in your mail, for example, to transmit more than 7% of your message. Well, yes, yeah. and of course, especially in an international environment, yes. where cultural signals are completely different. Yeah, yeah, of course, in, in uh, international teams, we have also to, to add as a, uh, the criteria of uh, the, the, the nationality, the culture of people, where they come from, what are their uses, and it's e e easy, easy to understand, but when you're in the situation, sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. So much more better than wandering 20 minutes 
If you can ask or not, just do it. If you need something, ask for it. I will give an example. One of my clients was facing an issue with mailing. Too much mails were sent with, with a lot of, you know, the for you information and, and the, the, the awful reply all. So on a Friday afternoon, I organized for them an online brainstorming about e-communication. Actually, it's not, it was not a too boring, long hours online meeting, but just a setup with several thematic chat rooms and a final brain writing. By the way, it's a very good tip if you, if you, if you, if you want to know about more about that. Brain writing is easy to set up and very powerful. Can you give us an idea of what is exactly brain writing? Yes. <laughs> so uh, brain writing is a, the new brainstorming, we can see. <laughs> uh, to explain quickly, uh, it is a method to generate ideas very quickly with the same rules as the brainstorming. So if you, if you don't mind, I, I will just do a very quick reminder about the, these rules. So first and the most important is no judgment. <laughs> Wild ideas and also you have to bite on the ideas of the others and focus on one topic. And I will add, don't be afraid about quantity. The best teams produce around 100 and 150 ideas for an hour. So when you are used to do that, it's really easy to become, become powerful and efficient. So brainwriting. Very productive. Ask, yes, yes. So if you ask participants to write their ID instead of announcing them as they do with traditional brainstorming station, so they can just use paper, of course, but just actually, I think it's better to do it online and it's a perfect period for that. So I already used brainstorming before COVID because it allows preparatory sessions synchronous and asynchronous sessions and of course currently it's totally recommended and helpful but if you don't mind i will go on <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes so if you if you want to know and to learn more about this you you can just send a mail or if you want to just write your name in the chat with brain writing and i will send you uh, some uh, something or contact you after the the conference and maybe that's on that's the bibliography uh, on the presentation that will yes, be accessible. Yes, I will also join a bibliography on the presentation with uh, some articles. So let's okay. come back to this afternoon of creativity and problem solving. The idea was to set a charter about e-communication. So they decided to avoid mails before 7 a.m. and after 7 p.m. during the weekend also. And they scheduled a mail-free morning. It was the Monday morning, <laughs> but the most appreciated was a new method they called read and fly mailing. To save time with the mail management, they decided to add sections in the mail, but good to know, action points, deadline, kind reminder, and they also added joke <laughs> to finish the mail. And uh, they also decided to find a way to not get coached in a reply all nightmare with a simple setting of the mailboxes. And yes, it's possible. You can do that. So we can go on with the, the second aspect with uh, the team culture. So the second thing concerning com communication is to connect each other, not only I, as colleagues, but as humans, in a way to create remote team culture with online socializing. I will give you some examples that, that you could do. First, you can, of course, use instant messenger platforms or video conference tool as uh, we are using right now. But the goal is to take advantage of this existing tool to meet one-to-one uh, one -one or collectively. That is social interaction. For example, you can create a group like Song of the Day and uh, even better, Worst Song of the Day. And you, know, you can also do the last incredible news or discussing about hobbies or sharing cooking time or receipts and why not a reading club if you want. Another thing to do is to hold virtual lunches coffee breaks, even create or attend a cultural event. I know that, uh, that some Dutch companies, now they are having the borrowed online time on Friday evening, why not you? But simply going for a coffee or just having a lunch together was a normal way in uh, workers when you was in the physical offices. So why can't you do it that from home? I think you can. And the third example for socializing is to organize remote friendly competition, friendly competition. I was happy to see that a company decided to organize a blind test, for example, and it could be a team build, a team, uh, build a kind of team building, also a team fitness challenge. 
And we will see further that this way of socializing, that's a fitness challenge, is also very good for self and collective care. A simple walking challenge for a charity association, for example, will be perfect and will perfectly fit to increase the company culture, your self-esteem, your mental and your physical health. And now your friends, family, relatives, yes, they are here around you and they're supporting you. Containing the communication with your friends and family, please dedicate time in your day or in your week for informal social interaction. Currently, it's really hard to keep on seeing each other, I know, and unfortunately, I guess it will take a couple of weeks or months to become normal again. But I know that we are some expats here and maybe it will be good that as we as expats that we are used to communicate with friends and family facing time zone challenge, but also long distance relationship. Maybe as expats, we can share our experience with colleagues and may, maybe they will take advantage and, and benefit of your experience. Currently, the situation is not only to have half an hour uh, to make a phone call for or FaceTime with your family. The point is to allow this non-professional time, but with your daily favorite professional tools. Can be confusing, isn't it? Professional tools, sometimes boring professional tools for personal and pleasant uses. It sounds like, you know, like an oxymoron. The strange situation can even decrease the satisfaction and the pleasure to be online with a friend. So let's go through and keep in mind that even if you are using professional tools, it's not work, it's not work time, it's just your time. Have in mind, if you renounce to online social interaction because of the tools, I already heard that. Consequently, you will also renounce to the benefits of the social interaction. And it's totally understandable, but keep in mind that doing so, you will culture the bad feelings of being isolated, disconnected or abandoned. And of course, I would like, you would like to avoid that. Mm. It's a way of doing self-care and that we will, we will talk about right now. If you don't mind, I just would like to explain why taking care of yourself right now is part of your quality of work life. It's even more more than that. It's one of your professional duty. Do you get it out? Let's come in. We spend so much time working. It doesn't make sense to only care about yourself before work or after work or during the weekends. You need to take care of yourself during work hours as well. In fact, it's when you need it the most. So better, I will say that not doing it will be counterproductive. Self-care will help you stay focused on your job and to be more productive and to come faster with solutions. It can be diverse from one to another employers, but some actions are very common. So for example, you can take lunch breaks uh, with a real lunch, not, not only and only and a coffee, yeah, to be clear. <laughs> Go for work at lunchtime, even if today you need a very good uh, raincoat. <laughs> and you, you can do some exercise before the day, after the day, or you can also work standing, that I'm standing right now for the presentation, for example, just for one hour in the day. I remember that a client of mine was decided, uh, decided to add standing desk in the office. Um, it's like bars, to be honest. That's what we have, we have that yes. actually. And uh, I discovered that uh, this desk was, uh, they have an awful name in French. In French, we just call them the, the manche debout, table manche debout, that's each standing table, just awful. But the effect is very good because if you work on this on this high and high desk during, I don't know, half an hour or just one an hour a day, it will reduce the risk of shoulder and back pain. And I guess you know what I mean. For sure. So of course there are the 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 physical pain, but we also have to face the mental distress and and sometime. Uh, a, li a little bit of bad, uh, bad feelings. So physical pain, are of course, an issue, but uh, it's uh, difficult to see each other and to know if your colleague is going very well through the camera. So even if it's a unique duty, it's not a unique duty of manager. Uh, we should all care about each other, not only managers. It's not only their duty, but especially during COVID, we have to do it together. 
But I have to say that managers have a huge responsibility during the pandemic. And they can, of course, doing a lot to, to increase the quality of work life and avoid work distress. So concerning managers, I want just a few minutes into brackets. I think that there are two keywords for the remote work. Flexibility first, trust them in the same time. But for manager, you also have to know as employee that it's a double challenge and they have to manage quality of work life for their employees, but also for themselves. So managers should proactively check in with employees and group leaders to provide and receive feedback. If you provide an immediate feedback as manager, uh, it will help you and the employee going on working together. The feedback should be the, the norm when things go well, but it's also the case when we are working remotely. Uh, if, go, if things go well, you will have the possibility to, to value the work of your employees. And in the second case, in the things don't go well, maybe it's a time to encourage them and just to prevent the, the development of bad habits. So how we can do that? Some managers decided to schedule a one-to-one -one video conference with their employee every week. So during this one-to-one -one phone or video meeting, managers can encourage team and the, 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 the employees they have uh, in, in front of them to speak openly about their mission, their workload, and their feelings. I, I, in the Netherlands, typically, uh, there's a, there's a, a meeting uh, environment the regular with your manager called the BILA, the bilateral meeting. Is it something that you uh, advise? Is it a space that you advise to use for this particular uh, possibility of, of unloading uh, uh, potential distress? Yes, yes, of course, you can, uh, you can use this time, but I just uh, would like to say that if it's only one time a month, maybe it's not enough. So uh, what you can do is uh, using this time for the big part of the, of the meeting, but in between, just be sure that you will have enough feedback with maybe, uh, again, one-to-one -one, uh, online video a meeting, but maybe shorter. So yes, you can use it, but the time of one month is too long to avoid uh, uh, the, the, the bad effects of, uh, of uh, remote working when you feel lonely. So more on a weekly basis, basically. Yes, yes, it's much more better. So, uh, but um, maybe we can help managers to have a guideline for this kind of meeting. So um, if you want to guarantee that you will scan uh, all aspects, just take care about three level of uh, quality of work life when remote working. First level, talking about their own missions. So you will ask, what are you work, working on during the coming week? How can I help you to succeed? What will be tricky or do you have a hard deadline? In other words, just get them talking. You will have several outcomes. Putting words on ID will help employee and anyone actually <laughs> to make the purpose of the job and the process much more clear. Moreover, managers can have an update on the professional situation of employees and employees will get an immediate feedback. I guess this is 20 or 30 minutes will be very precious for both of you. Second level of this one-to-one -one meeting, talking about organization, their individual organization, but also the collective organization. Here is a tip. Be conscious of asking open-ended questions, such as, tell me about the new remote working arrangement, or what about the past meeting? or what about your workload this week? And the third level of the one-to-one -one meeting should be the feelings. Ask questions as, how is it working out for you? Did you find a satisfying way to manage your work-life balance? Or also, how is it going with your children? You, of course, you can use open-ended questions as well. It's much more better than queries with yes or no answer. You know, this kind of question, you will also say, are you okay? And maybe you just, as usual, reply, yes. Uh, it's the same kind of reply as the fine of the daily, how are you question? So we would like to avoid this. 
maybe you don't feel really comfortable with asking about the feelings, but just use a classical sentence, but don't use it at the beginning of the meeting, but just at the end of the meeting. Like, okay, we have done with professional aspects and now what about you? And it will be maybe easier for you. By this way, you will have the opportunity to look out for sign of struggle and pay attention to the changes of in behavior. You have two ways to observe that, that signs. One is as a passive observer, tone of emails, phone calls, and the speed at which employee res respond. Uh, I have seen some company deciding to have uh, some time uh, very uh, uh, open, open eyes from managers, but also for, from employees about the, the, the tone of, uh, of, the, of the emails. And it was totally, uh, uh, it, it, it worked very well. And I, I should recommend it to, to others also to, to do it. It's very easy. You don't have to change anything. Just open your eyes about what you will see in the mail. If something is, is changing, mm, it's not a good sign. What about the, the chat rooms that are being in, put in place by some of the, some of the companies to allow a, a specific dedicated amount of hours and a dedicated space online, of course, for individual employees uh, who feel that they need to talk? Uh, does it need to be with uh, accompanied by a professional psychological, for example, or what, what is your recommendation there? Yes, yes. Uh, you know, it's, I, I would say if it's for normal help, uh, of course, the, the words of a friend, of a colleague, of your manager can help. But if you are, are experiencing something more difficult, uh, I, I think that, uh, of course, you will need something else than just a friend support. So I have seen that some companies that decided to have a contract with medical platforms and th this kind of medical platforms offer online consultation for GP, but also for specialist doctors with an access to psychologists. So the company was paying a fee every month for the, the employee and then the staff has a full access to the platform. I think it's a very smart service because at the end, it's just uh, between the employee and the psychologist and the help is really clear together and it can be only one shot if it's not necessary to get more, but it can also uh, be uh, repeated every week in case of needs. Yes, and it's important because it's for everyone. So it's not just employees, yes. but it's, uh, it's all employees. It's, uh, it's just uh, employees and managers. I was talking yes, to an HR manager. <laughs> yeah. And I was exactly, and I was talking to an HR manager yesterday and she was mentioning that uh, the first thing, one of the first thing that they, they did was organize uh, webinars and session for crisis management for managers with the assumption that not all managers are crisis managers. And this no. is not something that you invent. And, uh, you know, it needs professional help as well. Yeah, yeah. They are not crisis manager and they are not psychologists as well. Uh, no. Because if you do so, they will become manager in crisis, and it's not the goal. <laughs> no, so, no, definitely yeah. not. Uh, it's important to take time to check in for the manager with their own feelings to make sure uh, they are still on track. So just you can schedule a regular catch up with your own top managers or mm -hmm. trusted colleagues also. But, you know, it can also be someone that know you very well and that uh, is connected, uh, who has some insight with your professional situation. And it's also could be like that. But let's come back to the attitude to what works and changes in productivity, because it's also uh, a question about productivity sometimes. Actually, I just have a comment from one of yeah. our attendees. Uh, as a manager, sometimes I feel that I became a psychologist just listening and listening to people as they are all going through a challenging time alone in, in, in abroad. 
and they show during COVID they open more and share more feelings than before. At the end of the day, do you feel very, you do feel very tired and drained? That yes. is why setting limits and self care I have found very important from Sophia. We'll try to put that in practice. That's nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, and uh, another thing uh, I was, uh, you know, I, I, I was supposed to talk it about later, but let's let's go on. Um, what we also organize for manager is time for supervision, because you have to, as manager, you need to share what you are uh, experiencing as manager in your life, and you you need comparison. Uh, in French, we say comparison n'est pas raison. That means even if you compare yourself with the other. It's not because it's different that you, you are doing something false, but it just give, can give you a feedback and a way to think about it differently. So this time of supervision are really important and not too difficult to organize. Uh, so I will uh, go on. <laughs> So I was uh, talking about we are at the interruptions, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's okay. It's a good point. So I was talking about passive observation of the signs, but you can also decide to become an active observer. It's a little bit different because, for example, you can use a survey to ask for a regular feedback from the team. For so as consultant and of course as researcher, I'm used to create staff survey to teams or companies. So I hope the following tips will help you. Actually, concerning survey, uh, what I will recommend is to have a regular survey. Every week, five or 10 rating questions, always the same, in a way to be able for you to compare and know more about the evolution of the workforce and the mood of the workforce. Another kind of survey is a thematic survey. One week, you can talk about Meeting efficiency, for example. Another week, the subject should be the ease of use of a specific software, for example, a new software. Then why not talking about customer relationship management? The thematic survey is a very good way to catch employers' attention on one specific topic and to improve the quality of work life relatively to this topic, step by step. But Emmanuel, if you don't mind, maybe we can just make a, a quick poll right now in the audience. Uh, just a question. You, you answer if you want. Uh, in the past months, who uh, answered to a quality of work life survey or a poll, even, even short in the past eight months? Just add in the chat one and we will count it uh, in a few minutes if it's possible. I would like to know it. <laughs> Actually, we did it also. as well. Yes, that's nice. <laughs> I see several reactions already. Nice. Okay. And so, so did we as well. Yeah. But if you are interested about quality of work life uh, survey, about satisfaction at work, just feel free to contact me after the webinar to know more about that. Or just, of course, again, to put your name in the chat saying, okay, I want to be contacted after the, the webinar. Um, but to give you ideas, I saw clients who decided to create a, a daily mood rating or a daily question. Or Actually, also that, Sophie, sorry to interrupt, but I have another reaction saying I created one uh, survey in the beginning of the lockdown and only 10% of the colleagues care to respond. And that's a very good point because I think very often people, when they start distributing uh, a survey, are worried about the response level. Yes, it's true. So uh, several things about that. First, uh, sometimes is the, the level of answer is low. It can be because of the construction of the survey. If it's too long or too boring, sorry to say that, but it's true, or it seem, seems too uh, pushy, people say, oh, I don't want to answer. Another thing is that uh, you have to schedule uh, recent uh, mail regularly because you, you don't know what happens in the life of the, the people behind the screen. Maybe at this moment, they don't have time and then they just don't think about it anymore. So you can schedule to send it, I don't know, maybe on uh, Tuesday then on Friday, then again a third and last time on, on Friday. And you will see, I'm, I'm used to do that. You, you will see pick on the answers. And at the end, you have a, a, a way that you cannot go uh, more, but we can talk about that uh, together later if you want 
definitely. And I have noted the name of, uh, of the participants who wanted to, uh, to have okay, some more information thanks. about the survey. So, uh, and another thing about the survey and the fact that people um, sometimes don't answer is who can access the results first and what will be done with the results. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you don't know who will read what you, are, you will write in the, in the survey, maybe you will not feel really comfortable to answer honestly. So you will say, okay, maybe I will not do it at all. But another ID uh, is the use of an app. If you have no survey, you can just go, okay, I will have a contract with an app. Uh, I will buy it. And the app is a way to measure the mood at, at work. So of course the app tracks employees mood and it puts the data into a dashboard and normally only HR and manager can use it. And the goal is to track four uh, only to improve the productivity and the, 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 the moral, the team moral, uh, and at the end, the productivity and the performance. Uh, again, two brackets, quality of work life is a very, very powerful tool for productivity and performance. Uh, it's not only an ethic question, a question of philosophy. The, the, the better you are, the better you work. So more and more company invest in quality of work life as it is a good way to invest in themselves. But I will not talk about hard skills today because I think we will talk about uh, in a few times. You were talking yesterday about uh, this, the, 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 the app allowing uh, employees to react very quickly and very easily as well. Yes. Yes, uh, the, the, this app, uh, you, are, you decide if you, you, have, you want to receive notif notification or not. And you just, uh, you can send, uh, you know, uh, it's just a, the smi a smiley. How do you feel today? And you have one, two, three, four smiley up and you just send a smiley. And uh, for the HR, for people who answer to uh, and who use this app, uh, it's easy to say, okay, today or to see that there are some uh, pics up or down and to see maybe uh, it's due to the day on the week because we also have seen that the day of the week has an impact of the mood of course mm. of course uh, but also because of uh, you know um, appointment or very important time in the company if you have a very important deadline and that everybody all the team is working on it you will see that maybe the mood will decrease a little bit the day before, then after the deadline, people will feel better. So it's just normal, no problem about that, but it's a way to, to, to see also the effect of the work on people, to see really, really. And the short amount of time that it requires the employees, the, 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 the playfulness of it is a great tool as well, because of course, yes. uh, it's sometimes harder to put words on feelings and it's yes. so much easier with a smiley and yes. so much more approachable and lighter also. But you know, uh, I also saw companies that say, okay, I don't want an app. I just will do a, a WhatsApp group and uh, we know each other and uh, we will just send it. Uh, I, I know that people will see what I will uh, send as a smiley, but we are just uh, uh, open to each other and I will tell the truth. So it's also possible to do that. Mm. Mm. So no cost. It depends cost. on the company culture, I guess. Yes, it depends on the company culture and of the teams, of course. So then uh, I would like to talk about interruption. Maybe you have seen this very nice picture in Facebooks uh, in the past days. So, you know, you see that dad is, in, in a, is having a meeting, do not enter uh, unless you are bleeding, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so I have a couple of, uh, I actually have a couple of reactions also uh, 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 and questions. Uh, Thibault was asking, uh, Sophie, you propose manager supervision yes. as an important thing to do. What do you mean exactly by supervision? I guess it's, it may be a little vocabulary thing here. Yes, sorry for that. <laughs> Uh, supervision is uh, it's like focus group. So you will meet with uh, all the managers. Uh, sometimes it can be inside in your company, so managers from your own company, but it also can be organized with managers from other company in the same fields. 
uh, and you have maybe one or two hours talking about uh, experience sharing. So one of the manager we share will begin with sharing an experience. Uh, of course, it's like the same rules, uh, the same first rules as brainstorming. That's no judgment. So uh, if a manager say, okay, I, I think this situation was a little bit difficult for me. I would like to share it and to have your advice, not what I should do or not do, but uh, maybe you can explain me to understand and to ask question, question I even don't think about, to, to know more about the situation, to understand it. Um, and it's, uh, it's really efficient because other people, uh, you know, they don't know all the, the situation. So they can ask you questions, like naive questions. And you will mm. say, mm, okay, maybe I didn't think about that, but may maybe it would be useful. So it's just to have a new eye of a current or situation. And actually, uh, Sarah is mentioning uh, something. <laughs> it's a very good point. She's saying the number of responses to a, a, any given survey may also depend on the level of trust between uh, the team and the management. Absolutely. And in the case of uh, you know, a low responses, then you have an answer as such, of course, in itself. Yes, yes, of course. That was well, we're talking about who can see the answer also and what they will yes. do. With it. Of course, but let's come. Yeah, again, an interruption. <laughs> yes, exactly. Sorry about that, but we knew it was going to happen. It's a, yeah, it's a hot okay. topic. No problem with that. So, but of course, I cannot talk about quality of work life and remote working without talking about interruption. But first. Let's have a look on traditional offices. When you come back to your previous life, where physical proximity increases the likelihood of colleagues spontaneously stopping by, it was nice. But even if the consequence of this unexpected knock on the door or knock on the shoulder can be positive, we have to say that uh, mostly uh, this interruption have negative effects because uh, it will take time to again, uh, work on the, 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 the situation on the topic you were working before the interruption. So today, especially during the pandemic, you know that notification, <coughs> I like the knock, 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 and all kind of interruption, also the, the, your daughter and or just a phone call can be detrimental of employees' well-being. So to avoid this, you could just schedule an offline working time, just that's a tip, a really easy tip to do. You take your calendar and you say, okay, and this time it's offline. I will work you know, like, like in a plane, for example. And working from home means sharing spaces also with your family members. So that's the best things to do for your own well-being, but also for their own well-being, is to make an official timeshare contract. You share your agenda and you, in this way, you will find a way to prevent the undesired overlap of work demands and family demands. And for example, you can indicate the hours you absolutely don't want to be disturbed and the order where you are more available or more flexible. Um, I have in mind a client of mine who provides cards to their employee. You know, those little cards you put on the door in the hotel, do not disturb. But they also add on the cards open and closed Open means, okay, you can come in, even if I'm working. And closed is to make the difference between the offline working time and the non-working time. I mean, it's a, the right to disconnect from work and the need to disconnect from work. We have a couple of questions actually going back to the previous, uh, to the okay. previous topic. Uh, do you think managers must, must be better prepared by the companies to manage people? Remotely or just yeah. manage people? Oh, okay. So I I, I, we have two answers. Do you think that uh, managers should be more prepared to manage people? Uh, in the most situation I have seen, I have, I have to face managers that finally are at this, um, they are managing people, but they never learn how doing it. That means they have technical competencies, technical skills, technical abilities. Finally, 
there was there was successful in one two three different missions and the the company decided to promote them as manager but when did they have the time to find uh, the, the the perfect skill to become a manager maybe they didn't take this time and they have to they have to learn how to be manager yeah and, and the second yeah. thing is if you want to uh, manage remotely it's another thing that it all the skills different skills so of course companies have to have managers to do so and that's the reason why we are together today i guess some managers maybe feel totally lonely and and um they don't know how to do it how to handle it how to manage it and i guess we can help i hope uh, it's in it's in line with the comment from uh, Thibault as well. I am worried that the exercise of supervision, as you propose it, without proper methodology, may potentially ex expose an employee to a number of biases and result into a painful experience. It's easy to say no judgment, and in reality, without professional mod moderation, it's very hard to do. And yeah, it's true. So it's totally true because it cannot be done. Supervision cannot be done without an external expert. That's a condition. You cannot do it just, okay, we just uh, uh, share uh, two hours between managers this afternoon and we call it supervision. No, no, no way. Just don't do that. You need an external support. Someone will organize it and uh, be responsible about that. So, of course, it's totally true. Thibault is totally true. You cannot do that by your own saying, okay, without truth. No way. Okay, so we need to move on because actually time is flying yeah, as we had expected. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> We Another have 10 minutes day. left. Oh, my God. So, so it, it will be tough. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure we will be able to see everything. But, you know, uh, concerning the, the, the workplace, I just would like to say that you have to uh, find a way to design your own workplace. So um, I, I, I know that uh, it's, it's difficult, but you have to create your uh, physical anchors because you cannot just take your office like... He, he was and coming at home and saying, okay, I, just, I take my desk, I take my computer and, but no, you will miss your colleagues, you will miss millions of you, you will miss a lot of things and it will, it will not be your workplace. So you have to design it by yourself. I know that a, a client of mine that has, you know, paperless company and uh, you know, every little flat say, okay, what can I do? I just have my laptop. So, uh, and I also using it for my personal use. So what can I do? And at the end, it's just say, okay, I have only one thing and I will show you. So that's mine. <laughs> well, I have the same. Have tea. <laughs> and he say, okay, I will take my coffee cup from, from the office and I will say, okay, that's my anchor. You can have several different anchors. I, my own is my jacket. When I'm wearing my jacket, I know that I am working. When I'm not, I'm, so, I'm wearing something else, but you can find your own. It's very funny. We, well, I spoke to an HR manager this week, and uh, she had received as a as a trial uh, from a, a Dutch company, an innovative Dutch company in Appledore. She had received a suitcase, which is yeah. a suitable bureau desk. It's yeah. called HOB, and it's a home office bureau desk. And you basically in the morning, eight o'clock, eight thirty, whatever time you start, you unfold and open the suitcase, you make your your small uh, desk space, and then you stay at that desk during the day. And then when you finished at the end of the day, you fold it and then and you put it, it somewhere yeah, else. It's true. And I felt it was very clever. You yeah, know, it's probably very costly. Clever. Yeah, very smart. But the, the thing is that today I just would like to share uh, tips that you can do even if your employer and the company don't allow you anything. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so we were talking uh, about space. Now just to talk about time. Uh, you know, before you have a, uh, uh, um, you have to establish a routine before your day. Be before, be because when we were working at the office, we had this switching time. You know, the time you switch from your mum or dad situation to your white collar situation. Now you don't have it anymore. So you have to find something to find a solution to switch from this time to uh, a, a tips, uh, um, an anchor to, to, to switch from your first life, family life to professional life. Another thing is the, the fact that 
Now we are, a lot of us are doing meetings. So a first meeting from 2 to 3 p.m., then another one to 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. And that is going on until the end of the day. But just make a step back. In real life, what happened between two meetings? Just almost a break or a transport time. So just slow down between two meetings, relax, and help yourself. Take care of yourself to prepare yourself to focus on the next, next task or the next meeting. Because what will happen if you don't do that? You will lose a lot of attention span. So one of the trap of remote working is long last working. And in other words, when you are working more than two hours, you think you are efficient, you are still efficient, but believe me, you're not. Or a lot of research have been done about attention span. So it's like the amount of time spent uh, concentrating on a task before becoming distracted. And believe me, it comes really sooner as you can imagine. By the way, how much people are, are still here? Mm. We're still good to go. It's a good, uh, good nice. portion of them. So. Nice. Okay, but you can increase your, your, uh, your quality of work life uh, by managing your attention span with, with just very little breaks between uh, two tasks or two meetings. You can go for a walk, of course, but you can also just, uh, I don't know, take a Sudoku or read a book, but just avoid screens for 10 minutes. Hmm. What, what uh, there's a question here as well for you. What yes. preconceived ideas about remote work did employers have that this period helped debunk? I guess there's a, there could be a, a separate seminar just for that, right? Yeah, for sure. But um, let me know, it's a, a, a French asking that. Maybe. We yes, have very it is. Yeah, of course it is. Um, uh, it is, we have very, very, um, uh, a lot of work to do about that because uh, some managers, some top management still believe uh, that remote working, uh, people will just not work or doing something else or be less efficient. They just, um, and the reason why is that because uh, they think that their own beliefs and false beliefs uh, um, are the, the best they can do. They didn't even take the time to know more about knowledge, research, science. So it's very the, the difference between beliefs and knowledge. So what we can do to help these managers and these top managers to uh, become more open-minded is to uh, help them to know more about efficiency when remote working. And uh, if you want to do so, uh, I, can, I can share with you a lot of, uh, of documents and articles about that. But of course, it's not a, a question of belief, it's a question of knowledge. And it's not just in France, and by the way. I felt that after yeah. coming back from the US after 15 years, it's in the Netherlands as well. And yet it happened from one day to the other, as uh, Thibaut mentioned. Thank you, Thibaut, for your, call, for your comment. Yeah, we need to move on. I'm sorry to press you. It's, it's practically 11.30. I'm sorry, guys, okay. for those of you who need to leave, uh, there's still a couple of uh, things to be said and, uh, and your little survey. Yes, uh, but maybe we can go on. You want to go on with the, the, the little survey or just I can go on? Yes, maybe it's a good idea because I okay. might be a So what, what I, I prepared for you, and uh, I can maybe if you want to know more about attention span, I, I can share that with you. But I prepare for you um, a very quick um, uh, survey, just one question. Uh, what you can do for yourself to increase your quality of work life after this uh, conference, uh, if you have just one thing to keep in mind or one thing you want to do saying, okay, hmm, maybe this is a good, a good tip for me, what will you do? Uh, I would like to do this with you because we will share it after the, the, the conference. Uh, maybe you hear something, but you don't remember it. And all the people will say, okay, I think this is a good tip. And doing this, we will just all make a, a job, a great job together to share all our ID, our current ID, or maybe something you can think about during the conference. So you just go on menti.com and the, you use the code 992234 and 9. And I will show you the results right now. Just I just have to 
stop sharing my screen for one minute. Thank you. That is a uh, bibliography. I will send it to you. And uh, Marie Emmanuel is actually in, interested in getting more uh, on information on uh, more information on attention spam. Thank you, Marie. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Sophie will do that afterwards. Just while we're waiting for everybody to get uh, to get in line, uh, maybe that's the time also to talk about you know the traditional uh, well-being indicators for uh, employee satisfaction are traditionally evolving around uh, hours, uh, work hours, flexibility and salary, uh, this period is showing that uh, maybe we are facing new indicators for uh, employee satisfaction and companies should be, should be realizing that there are new indicators today for, to measure the employee satisfaction, right? You still with me, Sophie? Yes, but I don't hear you. Ah. Again, can you do it again? Uh, you know the, 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 the traditional indicators, well-being indicators for uh, employees oh, yeah. around uh, working hours, flexible hours, and salary, are those being replaced by new indicators because of the time that we live in? Yes. Yes, it's true. Uh, uh, the, maybe we can just uh, take two minutes for that because uh, there was a very famous research done in 90 by uh, Karasek and Tyrell, that's a two very big researcher. And uh, they have pointed three kind of uh, criteria for well-being at work. And if you don't have this criteria, you of sure will be very stressed at work and of course less efficient and have less well-being. And so the first one is the, is, uh, the level of demand. It, you have to compare the level of demand of the job and your own skills. If the, the, the job are too much demanding regarding your skills, it will be hard for you to, uh, to have a very good quality of work life. Second thing is the, the level of autonomy uh, of, uh, of your job. If you can decide by yourself how you do your job, or if you have a lot of process that they, okay, I have to do first thing, second thing, third thing, and you don't, you even cannot choose how you do your work. And then the third thing is the social support. Uh, to be sure that the well-being at work and the quality of work life is efficient or high enough, you have to be sure that the, uh, the company uh, gives social support, that means organizational support, and that the colleagues offers also emotional support. And of course, uh, we have seen with the research also that emotional support is much more higher, much more efficient uh, as organ organizational support. So. There's three things, so autonomy, uh, job demand, and um, uh, social support are the very three important criteria about uh, well-being. Okay, well, unfortunately, I think we are reaching the end of, uh, of the webinar. There is still so much to be said. Yes. Um, I know that we, we didn't quite touch absolutely everything, uh, but uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out either to uh, Sophie or myself. And uh, we will follow up with uh, the link to the recording and the presentation. And so you will have all of our contact information. And uh, again, thanks a million, Sophie, for sharing all these tips and best yeah. practices. I oh, hope my pleasure. Uh, it will have helped uh, the participants today, and I'm sure it did. And uh, well, Bonne chance in those uh, remote weeks, remote working weeks ahead of us. And, uh, and until the next time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.